BT, what you'll find is, is you'll see this too. I don't know if you'll catch it as much as we're going through today, but I wanted to make sure to highlight it. But certainly as you, if you're not already familiar with the skills, as you familiarize yourself with the skills, you'll say, hmm, that looks familiar. That sounds kind of familiar. And what Marsha Linehan did was she really pulled from a variety of different therapeutic modalities um, and just different areas to really package these skills to help clients with emotion dysregulation. And so we're going to talk about what this integration of approaches looks like for clients. So DBT does incorporate a CBT techniques. So it focuses on identifying and changing maladaptive thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors. And it emphasizes the understanding of the relationship between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. So clients are taught to recognize and challenge distorted thinking patterns, develop alternative coping strategies, and modify any problematic behaviors. And so this really helps clients to gain insight into their thought processes, thought processes, there we go, and develop a more adaptive response to the challenging situations that they are facing. Right. So we have to really take this whole approach to making these changes to coping with that, you know, those um, coping with those negative thoughts that clients might be having or to managing those maladaptive coping patterns. And so this is where we see that integration of CBT based looking material based. I think that was the way I don't think that was quite the way I wanted to say it, but we'll, we'll go with it. Just to give you an idea, though, of some of the differences um, between DBT and CBT. So DBT adds a mindfulness component. And so we see these, um, there's also these acceptance techniques. And so we'll talk a little bit about mindfulness and acceptance in a little bit. DBT takes the judgment out of CBT. So what I mean by this is rather than thinking my thinking is wrong or labeling something as a distortion, Call, clients actually acknowledge that there's a problem with acceptance rather than judgment. So then they're able to move towards finding a more balanced way of interacting with their environment. DBT is principle driven. So it's administered with treatment stages and priorities as well. Um, we're not going to go over just due to our time for today, we're not going to go over the treatment stages and um, priorities, but we will talk about the goals of DBT. How this is different than CBT is CBT is protocol driven. So if in CBT, if I experience a panic attack, then there is a protocol that I follow, right? There's psychoeducation, there's abdominal breathing and so on. And so when with DBT being guided by um, or being principle driven, it just allows for there to be some more flexibility. There are um, more intensive, specific self-monitoring exercises within the DBT framework. So those include a diary card. Um, we can look at the chain analyses. It would include that as well. DBT uses a hierarchy determined by severity and threat to target behaviors. So what this means is, you know, when clients come into session and they have all of these different things that are going on. And I know we've all sat in these sessions before, right? You're like in the session and the person's like, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And you're like, where should I start? Right. And like, I've had that room like, oh, this is it. And then the client talks for like five more minutes and I'm like, nope, this is it. And so sometimes that can feel a little bit overwhelming. So the great thing about DBT is, is, is that this, the, um, this hierarchy is just set. And it's like that for every single client. And what that means is when clients present to you with any life-threatening behaviors, with any self-harming behaviors, those are going to be the first things that you address, right? So that is where the focus of your session is on. And also one of the reasons why I love DBT is because second to that, if a client is presenting with any therapy interfering behaviors, then DBT also says, hey, you have to address that as well. And you need to address these, those um, concerns with safety um, and as well as the therapy interfering behaviors before you're able to effectively do this other work. I love that DBT sets the stage to address therapy interfering behaviors because I know I've been there. They can be super challenging to identify. I have had those sessions where it's like I can, I can feel my own anxiety is a little bit high being like, how is this going to go? 
But DBT really opens the door for that. And so I found that to be just really effective in my clinical work. DBT is a behaviorally focused treatment. DBT has an openness to spirituality. I do think that this is important to note. This does not mean religion, so two different things. But um, we, I do know that there are those in our field who work from like a Christian-based perspective or incorporate spirituality into their work. And so I do think in all fairness, highlighting that is really important. Within the mindfulness module, in the supplemental handouts is where you would find some more information on using DBT um, and integrating some of those aspects of spirituality. So you would find that in the mindfulness module in the supplemental handouts. There is the use of therapist self-disclosure in DBT. And so usually when I'm consulting or when I'm, when I'm working with interns that I've had in the past, I'll say to them, if you're saying something, if you're sharing something to illustrate a point, then that is an appropriate use of self-disclosure. If you're doing it to talk about yourself, then you need to seek a different venue for that, right? And so when we're talking about this idea of self-disclosure too, I will just use myself as an example. We're talking about really um, like mundane experiences. Um, you know, we're not sharing our trauma history with clients or anything to that effect. When The one that I can always refer to that's easy um, that I share with clients is when we're talking about the difficulties and challenges in working with mindfulness. So I'll let clients know, you know, my initial experience with mindfulness, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the mindfulness module, but I'll normalize that for clients by sharing my experience. And then by really also not just sharing my experience, but also saying like, here's how it progressively became a little bit easier for me to access these, that skill. How can we help support you in using this skill? So that's what that use of self-disclosure would look like.